Welcome to SST College of Arts and Commerce. This is SST Udupedia. Myself, Assistant Professor Maithili Gauri Shankar, going to teach you Bachelor of Commerce, Accounts and Finance, Second Year, Information Technology in Accountancy, Semester 3. We are going to see today Introduction to Computer, Part 1. In this subject, in this course, we are going to see these following modules. First module is Introduction to Computers. Second one is Office Productivity Tools. Third module is Web. Fourth module is Introduction to Internet and Other Emerging Technologies. Fifth module is Electronic Commerce. What is Computer? Computer is an electronic device. It receives input data and instructions perform processing and produces outputs who give the input the person who is having the data or information from any field will give the input according to the need of the process the processing code will be done by itcs candidates or project managers and finally the output will be output Output will be getting according to the input. What are the advantages of computers? Storage of information, quick data processing, audio visual aids, better presentation of information, access to the internet, quick communication between student, teacher and parents. These are according to the student level the advantages. Other advantages in e-commerce are we are interacting directly to the customer. The customer can place the order and track their order and many other facilities we are seeing in e-commerce. Now, it helps us the technology which we are using to save time also. And other advantages are computers are very accurate when performing any programmed routine. Then manual, the result made by computer are very accurate. Computers are flexible that they can perform a variety of program tasks. Comparing to human, the task can be done only one at a time by the human. But computer can do many tasks. The computer speed enables computer to handle tasks quickly even those with complicated procedures. Big big calculations are done in the computer using the many application in different fields. For example in max, statistics, accounts, cost accounting subject these are done in many applications. The big problems are shorted in a short time of period and the answer is getting very easily and accurately. Computers process large volume of data efficiently within a short period of time. So the answer will be accurate in short period of time. Here we are going to see some of the advantages and disadvantages. Speed, accuracy, multitasking, storage, data security, automation and reduction of cost are the advantages. Disadvantages as the human work are done by computer efficiently, unemployment is there, health issue of continuously using more time by the person is there, cyber crime, security is very important that virus and hacking is preventable using many applications. Improper use of data will be the disadvantages. False content will be uh, getting many customers in many upside we have experienced in many situations. False content or fa false website leading to mislead of customer and also business. Environment impact also there in is the one of the disadvantages. Some of other disadvantages are excessive use of 
computer by students lack the verbal and non-verbal tools necessary for the development of social and emotional skills. The nerve system will be reduced processing you by continuous using of screen timing. Leads to decrease educational effectiveness within a classroom and allow the problems down in the child's schooling. When computers are used in teaching, there are tendency that the effective teaching will disappear between the teacher and the learner. The communication between the teacher and learner will be uh, reduced. This is due to the intervention of the attention that is given by the students to the computer mission. In other words, the computer would become a barrier in communication between teacher and the learner. Now we are going to see the classification of computers. On the basis of generation, we are having five generations. First, second, third and fourth. Fifth. On the basis of data, processed, analog, digital and hybrid. So analog we will have the uh, result in or output in the form of graph. Digital we will have in the numbers. Hybrid both both digital numbers and also the graphical notation. For example, we can see ventilator machine in the medical line which giving both the analog and digital values. Next, on the basis of size and capacity, supercomputers, mainframe, mini computers, mobile computers and microcomputers. According to the generation, the development of the computers are there and big computers are become compact now using the development of the technology on the basis of purpose special purpose and general purpose special purpose will be that in the companies industries and production units general purpose student and also home needs and basic office needs we can say so these are the table where uh, we are going to see different type of generation and what are the innovations, main memory, external storage, input output devices, languages, operating system and size used in different generation. In first generation vacuum tube was used, vacuum tubes was used and the memory was magnetic drums. The external storage used is punched cards. And input and output was done in punched cards and papers. Languages used are low level machine language. Operating system was not there. Human operate to set switches. Size is mainframe for example NLAC, EDVAC and UNIVAC. In second generation the transistor, transistor was used in as main component. RAM and ROM bar was introduced. Magnetic caves and magnetic disks are used as the external storage. Magnetic tape, punched cards, paper for output are used. Assembly language, some high level languages for example basic, coral, fortran are used Human handle punched cards are used in this generation. Mainframe for IBM 1401, NCR 300, IBM 600 are the size used in this generation. Next in the third generation we have seen integrated circuit. Basic electronic components are used where pram and dram has been came and improved disk floppy disk was introduced in third generation keyboard for input and monitor for output has been introduced more high level languages are there to operate and the operating system was introduced IBM system and 360 ICH 360 Honeywell 316 are example for mini computer in third generation.
for in fourth generation lsic and vli vlsic microprocessor integrated circuit was used epram and sram was introduced floppy disk and hard disk was used monitor for output was came and languages and application software was started using in fourth generation in there the disk operating system ms dos and pc dos was started using as the operating system size was ibm pc apple mac intos was introduced in fourth generation in last generation ultra large scale integrated circuit was introduced using that we are having the laptop eprom simm and dimm was the main memory modified magnetic and optical disk or external storage keyboard pointing device scanner as input and monitor as main output now we are using in the languages artificial intelligence experts are working towards for future artificial inputs yeah, sorry artificial intelligent outputs also operating system is gui based example windows 95 and windows n9 size is very small size laptop notebook digital diary palm top and pocket pc are present and now we are using in your day to day life also according to the volume size in a different generation we are seeing here the graph how the changes happened in 1960 there was a workstation of having more than one room second in 1970 it was mini computer with capacity volume of 10 power 6 then the personal computer with capacity of 10 power 3 after that it was reduced now we are using smartphone and scale sensors with capacity of 10 power 0 volumes it was measured in mm cube these are the structure of our types of computer and their figure super computers will have bigger in size and the processing data will take time to give the output after that the micro computer it is also occupies big area next it was having as mini computer at last we are seeing our laptop as a micro computer we are having next topic as hardware here we are having all the hardware parts of one desktop what are the hardware parts flash memory hard reader dvd drive hard drive system unit monitor printer microphone speakers keyboard usb ports cd and dvd disc mouse modem usb flash drive flash memory cards these are the hardware of the computer otherwise called as physical part, parts of the computer system in cpu these are the parts available that are power supply microprocessor microprocessor fan to cool down the system ram video card sound card motherboard casing cd dvd drives and hard disk drive next diagram is showing how the laptop parts are there from the camera to rom cpu and boot bottom cover usb board wifi speaker everything is compactly made in the laptop than our desktop these are the parts we are seeing in bigger size in laptop all it is compact 
in small due to the integrated circuit we are using in this generation next we are going to see the pyramid in which how the storage are there first cpu registration is the leading one where we will have all the data stored with the uh, input data input device like keyboard mouse removable removable media scanner camera mic video remote service and other sources we can give the input permanent storage area we are having rom that is bios removable devices network internet storage and hard drive next level we are having ram physical ram virtual memory next level kakes level 1 and level 2 finally we are having the data storage in cpu register this is our next topic types of memory in this we are going to see primary and secondary memory in primary memory we are having ram random access memory rom read only memory in ram we are having sram static ram and dynamic ram in rom we are having prom programmable rom and erasable e electrical erasable prom these are the types of primary memory secondary memory we are having hdd hard disk sdd now it was introduced and it was using in all laptop nowadays compact disk floppy disk and magnetic tape now we are going to see how the memories are converted into measurable units one bit is equal to one cell or binary storage of 0 and 1 whatever numericals alpha numericals we are giving to the computer it is converted to the binary form 0 and 1 so that is called binary digit 4 bits is equal to 1 nibble that is half byte 8 bit is equal to 1 byte that is byte we used to call so now we know kilobyte megabyte gigabyte terabyte according to the calculation of byte 1024 byte is equal to 1 kilobyte 1024 kilobyte is equal to 1 megabyte 1024 megabyte equal to 1 gigabyte and 1024 gigabyte equal to 1 terabyte till now we are having the provision of 1 terabyte capacity storage after that in advance we may getting 1024 pentabyte and 1024 hexabyte where database storage in many companies are using in higher size of storage possibilities what is primary storage primary storage is the main memory in a computer it stores data and program that can be accessed di directly by, by the processor primary storage is installed internally we have seen just now ram and rom data from ram can be read that is retrieved and written that is stored during processing whereas data from ram read only memory can just be read only secondary storage are that separate from the computer itself where software and data can be stored on the permanent basis in the secondary storage according to that we can store the data and retrieve the data from the secondary storage so these are the secondary storage flash floppy disk zip disk cd and readable read and writable cd cd r means readable only readable writable dvd readable only dvd storage tape smart media removable hard disk hard drive micro hard drive and memory stick smart cards online storage site pc card nowadays we are using uh, sim card integrated chip etc also magnetic chip 
everything comes under secondary storage what is the difference between primary storage and secondary storage the capacity of primary storage is small ram and rom but secondary storage it is extendable and it is large access speed is fast in primary storage because it was inbuilt in the system secondary storage is medium because we want we used to eject and insert whenever it is necessary cost per mb is expensive in primary storage but cheap in secondary storage portability is fixed because it is fixed inside the desktop or laptop in the primary storage but portable in the secondary storage need is compulsory in primary storage without the primary storage we cannot operate the desktop or laptop but secondary secondary storage is alternative alternative if we need to storage any detail we can get the provision of it otherwise we can store in the primary data itself so till now we have seen the basic idea of computer how the generation or their parts are there what are the storage systems are there thank you students